The world's population now has exceeded seven billion people. And the most rapidly growing segment of that population is age 60 and over. This new aging world is unprecedented, and it sets the stage for one of the biggest health challenges that we will face. What is the fate of our aging brain? Now, as we age, we gain wisdom. We also lose, most of us, a little edge. For example, it becomes a little bit harder to strategize. The thinking process becomes a little bit slower, and sometimes it's hard to hold that thought in the mind. So, um, have you ever been to the refrigerator, opened the door, and then thought, what, what, why did I open this door? What for? Um, that's happened to all of us. Um, including the speakers here in the session. But what's worse with aging, really, is that our minds become vulnerable to diseases like dementia. What is dementia? Dementia is an epidemic with no treatment. It is a collection of diseases like Alzheimer's disease, frontotemporal dementia. Um, Parkinson's disease includes dementia, progressive supranuclear palsy, corticobasal degeneration. It's a collection of diseases that slowly, insidiously destroy our brains. In fact, rot our brains and rob us of critical functions, of thinking, of learning, of memory, of creating, of imagining, communicating, really robs us of our lives. So, we know the most common form of dementia is Alzheimer's, and it touches all of our lives, either directly or through loved ones or through caring for loved ones. Well, how common is dementia in general? It's common. Every four seconds, somewhere in the world, there is a new case of dementia. That's every time you blink, and 240 cases over the course of my talk. So, um, there are no treatments, no interventions for this. And uh, without novel treatments, without novel interventions, over 100 million people will have dementia, will suffer from dementia by the year 2050. That's alarming. Is this our cognitive fate? Can we escape this cognitive fate? Um, I will pose and speculate, yes, we can escape this cognitive fate. And the answer to this problem may come from a remarkable discovery over the past 20 years, and that is that aging itself is a biologic process that is amenable to change. That's exciting. Each of us has an internal aging clock that's ticking. And you can speed up your aging clock, and we know how to do that with stress, um, with illnesses, um, bad lifestyle habits. That speeds up aging. You can also slow it down. How can you slow down um, this aging process? Here are a few tips from rock star scientific laboratories um, from all over the world. A few pearls. One, sugar is toxic. It accelerates the aging process. Avoid it. Enjoy some, but av avoid most of it. Sleep. Sound, moderate, good sleep 
really helps to slow aging and boost cognitive functions. And the idea is that if we can, if we can promote longer life, what we're finding is that those mechanisms also boost health span and brain span. Avoid sugar, sound sleep, what else? We know that exercise is good for us, right? A remarkable study from a few years ago showed um, in millions of Taiwanese people that 15 minutes of cardiac exercise a day extended lifespan by four years. That's remarkable. Not only did it extend lifespan, but it also extended health span. Less cancer, less disease, longer life. 15 minutes a day. If you add on another 15 minutes, you get another year. Wow. Exercise is a potent anti-aging factor. Avoid sugar. Sleep well, six to eight hours. You know what your body needs, and exercise. Okay, so beyond, beyond lifestyle factors, the biomedical discoveries coming out of laboratories have the potential and will revolutionize our lifespan, our health span, and our brain span. A few months ago, um, my laboratory, in collaboration with um, rigorous scientists from all over the world, made a remarkable discovery, a breakthrough in aging. Meet Clotho. She is the Greek fate, and she spins the thread of life that we depict here as DNA, as our genetic code. She is the daughter of Zeus, He's even scared of her because she determines when you, will, um, when you are born and when you will die. She is also the eponym for a hormone that circulates in our bodies called clotho. Now, this hormone, this molecule clotho, which is, again, natural to our bodies, is a regulator of aging. What does that mean? Well, um, over the past decade, it's been found that clotho, in higher levels, promotes longer life. It's true in mice, in flies, in worms, and maybe even in humans. Now, for the science aficionados, clotho is a type 1 transmembrane protein. It's made by the cells in our body, shuttled to the surface, and then cleaved by an enzyme. It's then released as a hormone, and then that hormone, clotho, circulates and bathes our brain and circulates in our blood and bathes our organs. Higher levels of clotho promote longer life, and lower levels are associated with shorter life. Now, one in five people, one out of every five of you, carries the genetic code in your DNA that produces higher levels of this hormone. And those of you with higher clotho live longer. Wow. Well, what we discovered is that you also show a boost in brain function throughout lifespan. And so what we found is those people with a genetic code with higher levels of clotho tested in a superior way across all of our measures of learning and memory, of attention, of memorizing, of visuospatial function, strategizing. Higher levels of clotho boost brain function. Wow. Extension of life and boosting brain function. We also found that those of you with higher clotho levels have a more robust area of your brain, depicted here in red and blue, called the prefrontal cortex. It's bigger with higher clotho levels. 
And so who cares? Well, it's bigger and it's, it's resilient in aging. And it's this area that controls parts of cognition in our ability to strategize, to hold on to a memory, to, um, to learn. And so, uh, Clotho, what we have shown is that Clotho, we know, promotes longevity, but that it also boosts brain function and structure. And so our challenge now is, how do we develop this into a therapy to help all of us live a longer and better life with a sharp, wise mind? And this brings me to a really fundamental question. And that is, can we eradicate dementia? Can we do that? It'll be tough. It'll be tough and it will require a major commitment um, from society, from our government, from foundations, philanthropy, to really push these discoveries and translate them into therapies that will help people. And these new therapies um, will mean a lot. In addition to saving lives, to improving the quality of life and aging, um, they mean more wisdom in the world. Um, they also mean saving billions of dollars yearly, the costs of dementia and enriching individual lives for people affected by dementias and for caregivers. Therapies would mean a lot. We have none now. So it'll be tough, um, but we have eradicated disease before. And um, in case in point um, is smallpox. So in 1979, just 25 years ago, the World Health Organization announced the eradication of smallpox. No one suffers from this disease anymore. It is a thing of the past. It's a disease that claimed in the 20th century 500 million lives across the world. It's a disease that um, that my own father survived as a toddler in rural India. And it's a disease that's been eradicated in his lifetime. So, you know, envision this. We have the biology, we have the knowledge, um, the discovery um, to move toward therapy. And, and I like to envision Alzheimer's disease as the new smallpox. It's eradicated, a thing of the past, the toxins, um, are sitting in a minus 80 freezer somewhere at the National Institutes of Health, no longer robbing our minds of, of memories and our ability to think and communicate and to live. And um, our discoveries really have the possibility to, um, to not only reinvent what it means to be 50. 50 is the new 50. We're there. We can do that. But envision that 150 will be the new 50. That we will live longer and healthier with a wise, sharp, and vibrant mind. We will escape our cognitive fate. For more information on um, what we do, um, please visit our website, theduballlab.org. Thanks. <laughs>